So the core concept in my, in my work has always been to study how the medium that I work with imposes itself on the subject that I, that I explore. So with uh, photography, which is my background, I very quickly realized that uh, my, my cultural perspectives, the, the limits of the machine, uh, influence what is represented. So uh, when I learned digital media, I brought these kinds of uh, questions to, to working with digital media. Um, one of the great things about digital media is that it's just numeric. So you can uh, um, process everything through software and uh, my studio and where I teach at the University of California in Santa Barbara, we uh, were very much focused on writing our own software. Uh, basically, we're interested in, in how software writing is also a place for creative practice. So the work that I'm presenting here at Datum Soria is titled Voice of Sisyphus. And it's a work that we created in 2011. Uh, I brought together a sound engineer and uh, a, a musical composer. And the work is about taking one photograph and having our software run through the photograph and take samples we then analyze the samples of uh, pixels, and we turn this into a four-channel sound experience. So we have four speakers in the exhibition space, and we have a large uh, projection. And you can see how uh, the software is changing the image, and uh, in real time, it creates uh, the sounds that you experience. So the big challenges are, first of all, when we started to do this, obviously, uh, when you just collect a lot of data and you turn it into sound, uh, at first, it's just basically noise. And so the question was, how do we turn this into, into an aesthetic experience? And so that's how the composer came in and we worked with him to Joshua uh, Dickinson, the composer. And uh, we worked with him to try to come up with different um, phases in the work to create a kind of story, sequence of stories. Uh, Ryan McGee is the sound engineer and he also uh, is an expert in spatializing sound. So, so because of the four channels, we can uh, move the sound around a little bit and position it in, in, in the space. So, uh, yeah, so biggest challenge was how do you turn a set of numbers in real time into an aesthetic experience? The second challenge is, and, and this affects all media art, uh, we wrote the work in 2011 and it was first exhibited in a gallery in Los Angeles. It then went to Berlin in 2012, then to um, uh, a place in Irvine in 2013, then it went to Shanghai to the Kronos Art Center. And every time, uh, the technology has been changing. So the computers change, the operating systems change, and the big challenge is how do, you, how do you create a work that you have to continuously adjust? Uh, or at least the problem is that you have to continuously upgrade the work. So uh, 
that's a, that's a big challenge for digital media. If you look at uh, 3,000 year old stones with writing on them, we can, uh, we can read those texts if we know how to read them. But if I give you my uh, floppy disk from 1989, it's very difficult to read that today. So that's the difference between analog and digital. Okay, that's a big question. Uh, so Western, um, let me answer differently. So um, I, I watched the transition from analog to, to digital in, in the early 1980s. And at, at the time, the biggest cultural difference was between uh, the engineering world and the artistic world. And then also the public was not yet ready for this kind of, kind of work. So um, the question you're asking me uh, has a lot of uh, interesting uh, problems because it's historical. So uh, a lot of the uh, early digital artworks happened because uh, people had access to, to, to the equipment. Uh, for instance, in the Art and Technology Exhibition at the Los Angeles County Museum in 1971, uh, the project was to, to place an artist with, with a company or with an industry. And one artist wanted to have access to a computer, and this one company had a computer. I think it was like a $20 million computer, which which performed less than my iPhone. And, uh, and eventually the project could not be done because the artist, uh, because the company didn't have the time to give to the artist. So a lot of, lot of the uh, cultural evolution happened through the introduction of technology to, to the culture. So um, my first, in interaction with Asian, the Asian community was um, exhibitions in, in Tokyo and in um, Korea. And um, my, I worked with Zhenga, the curator Zhenga, and uh, participated in an ex exhibition in Beijing in 2006. And what I saw was that uh, the Asian cultures are very quickly adapting and producing uh, really interesting works, uh, but it's happening in the last maybe eight years. So what I tried to give you in my answer was that, was that uh, historically everything started in the 1960s when it was really hard, and as the cultures uh, of engineers artists be, could begin to talk to each other, and a lot of that I know from uh, what was happening in California and in, in Europe. Um, and by the time I connected with Asian culture, it was in the late 1990s and early 2000s. So can I, I want to add to that, because there's another, another interesting position. I teach in a, in a program at the University of California that was created by electronic composers. And so in the electronic music field, the, the tradition of composers and audio technologists working with engineers uh, has been in place for a long time. So there's a history. We have... We have uh, uh, Pierre Schaeffer in, in Paris and Stockhausen in Germany uh, and from the 1960s, even before computers existed. And so um, music people were ahead because they needed to process the, the sounds. And, and for image makers like myself, 
It was only around, um, I would say, in 1986 when it was possible to start to work with digital um, images. So, okay, I'm trying to figure out how to answer that. Um, my, my interaction with um, Asian culture actually takes place in my classroom. Most of my students are Asian, so they come from um, Iran, from Korea, from India, and many come from China. And so um, what, I'm, what I'm seeing, and it's very interesting, is how, how quickly uh, the digital media culture itself has become global. In other words, you can't, if you look at a digital media artwork, it's, it's difficult to, to say, oh, this work came from, uh, let's say, Russia, or this work came from France, or, or from Korea, or from um, China. Unless, you, unless the imagery uh, expresses that. So, um, I don't know if I really have an answer for you. Okay, so that's another big challenge. Yes. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm an artist who um, lives in three different worlds. I live in the fine art gallery world where I do present digital media works. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a world that is, um, I would say, uh, ha I would say that world has a conservative approach to digital media art. Uh, then there's the digital media art field, which ZCAM represents. So um, this has been developing now for maybe 30 years, if not more. And then also there's the academic uh, research work which we do at the university where um, we, we, we put together image makers and architects and computer scientists and uh, signal processing engineers and sound people to come up with new different things. So the audiences are very different. And you know, for the engineering world, we present at publica you know, publications and conferences. Digital media art, we have places like the ZCAM. And then the gallery world, it's mostly um, fine arts museums and uh, private collections. OK, so. Um, You know, because I live in these three different worlds, I'm, I'm interested in, in uh, a research approach. So I could say that the kind of artworks I do is prototyping. So, you know, I come up with new ideas, we, we try to figure out how to create them, and, um, and then, then we kind of study it, and we write a paper, and we, we, pre we then try to uh, presented in the di digital media context, so so that's that's a particular approach. And in the art world, I think the expectation is that you produce an experience for the public, and the the medium itself is not not a big question. I think for for um, for that kind of a, a situation. <laughs> 